from the standard mode, how do I do set the tracking up? And how do I do face up north? Okay, so this is your this little the double screen. That's how you're going to get to your different screen modes. So you're going to start with that, and then so your your questions are mostly about charting. So we're going to a full chart screen. You hit OK. So here are our charts. So to set a track, so from this screen to bring your menu screen up, you just hit the OK button. Now it's going to bring your menu button up. So you said you want to set up a track. So you're going to go down to your tracks menu and you're going to hit OK. And then if you look over on the right hand side of the screen, it has stop track. We already have one started. So I'm going to stop this one and I'll show you how to start a new one. So you're just going to cursor over and you see the stops highlighted. You hit OK. And it's going to ask us do you want to save it? No, we're not going to save this. We're just going to erase it. Well, if, oh, you you sure? save it, yes. if you save it, mm -hmm. does that mean anytime you come up on that link, it'll automatically come up, or do you have to put it on? Uh, it depends on whether you, when you save it, you can either hit save it and then hit hide, or hit save and hit show. So if you save it, show, it'll always be there. And then if you always want to get rid of it, if you end up with too many tracks, you can just go and change it from show to hide. And so once I save it, the tracks are always going to be there. Yeah, mm -hmm. and you can save those tracks to like an SD card if you wanted to, as well. Um, but so. Let's just, I'm going to back out and I will show you how to set a track up. So on this unit, the back is just this arrow key that says back. So we're just going to, we're just going to go back to the screen. So all right, we want to start a track from scratch. So we're going to hit our OK button to bring our menu up on the right hand side. And then we're just going to arrow down to where it says tracks. We're going to hit OK. And then we're going to cursor over to the, you see where it says start track on the right. It's highlighted. We hit OK. And it's going to say track started. Okay. First thing I always do is the default track is going to be black in color. So we're going to go adjust it so we can see the track better. So you're just going to use your get use your, your arrow keys to go down to current track. And we're going to hit select it and hit OK. And you see it says edit color. I'm just going to arrow down to edit, hit OK. And I always like to make it like purple or red. So we'll just make it red because it's easy to see. So I have it, so now it's red. Um, if you want to edit the name of it, you know, a lot of times I'll, when I'm practicing, I'll actually save one track for each day I'm practicing a different color. So I'll, I'll, a lot of times if I want, I'll go in and I'll edit it, I'll put the date, like whatever body of water I'm on. So to do that, we just hit OK. And we're gonna use the arrow key. We're gonna delete the current, current track. And for example, if we're on like the upper Chesapeake Bay, I might call it, you know, I might call it Upper Bay, and then whatever, whatever day it is that I'm there. I'll even, you know me, I'm super anal, so I'll even capitalize the day. <laughs> Um, Jim, there's some marine stuff. Upper bed, and then I'm not going to do the date, but you get the gist of it. And then you just come down here and hit save. So that's that's all set up. So now we have the track started, and we have the change the color the color change. So we're just going to hit back um, to get us that prior screen, and back again. And now our track is started, and you can actually barely see, but it's, red, it's titled though. Upper Bay. So then, when you name when you name it, it'll appear. It, the it. name appears on there. Oh, yeah. Cool. Um, and then it's hard to show, but as this boat would move, you would you'd be laying that red track down. Okay. Yep. So then you can always just follow that back. Second question. I'm gonna go back and stop it real quick too. We're gonna stop this track and save it. I'll show you how to do that. Um, so again, we hit your OK button, and then we go back down to tracks. And now up on the right, instead of it saying start track, it'll say stop track. So we're cursor, we're cursor, cursor up to the stop track, hit OK. And now it's going to ask us if we want to save it. And the save is automatically highlighted. So we're just going to hit OK. And then I could also name it at that time. Or I've already named it, so I don't need to rename it. So I'm just going to hit OK, and that will be, it'll save it as upper bay.
if you did another track, you change the color, would yep. it default to Upper Bay automatically? And the, no, it would be like track 01 or track 02. It puts like a default name in there. Yeah. Yep. yep. Okay. So that's the tracks. Now, if I have waypoints in that, uh -huh. is the waypoint going to take me the most direct route? No. Or is it going to take Well, me yes. It, so, so, like, if you're talking about if you have a waypoint and then you want to hit, like, the go-to mod, the go-to function right. to take you to the, take you to there, it's not going to take you, it's going to take you as a crow flies. Okay. It won't necessarily take you as, like, the deep water the side. Deep, the deep water. That's why I lay the tracks. Because yeah. you can follow the tracks That's back. That's easier. Yeah. Um, there is, and Navionics does have a um, like an auto route. Um, there's a Navionics app that has like an auto route function that I think does actually take you to, to through the water to get there. Mm -hmm. um, but it's not compatible with this. Okay. Um, the what screen from the down from the regular sonar screen, which you would run normally. You don't run with the down, you don't run with the chirp one. You run with the normal sights, with the normal scan. So there's this. These units are all chirp. Yeah. But there's there's two things. I actually have a. I want to go grab a visual and I'll show you the differences. Mm -hmm. So I'll pull this up and then I'll go grab the. Uh, I'll go grab kind of like the, the visual aid I have. So this is your sonar down vision and your sonar. Right. Both use chirp. Right. Well, I'm going to go grab this visual aid and I'll Would show you the you difference normally, between the two. You normally run, run on this one? Yes. Yeah, I, when you say run, what do you mean by like when I'm moving the boat? Yeah. Yes, I would, yes. You'd go with this one. And you would only put this on when you're at a location which you want to look at the bottom more detail? Yeah, so this, this will show you fish. They'll both show you fish and they'll both show you the bottom. This is down vision, chirp down vision. The chirp down vision does a better job of showing you detail on the bottom. It will show you fish, but it's easier to see the actual fish on this screen above. Okay. This shows you better the separation in the fish, um, and the reason is because they, they're using different frequencies and different cone shapes. So I'll be right back. I'm going to show you. I have a visual aid that will show you the difference between Okay, well, let's go more. Let's do some more. Right? Okay. Visual aid I can okay. The, um, now to set this up to view it on the phone or on an iPad. Yes. How do you do that? That's a good question. So we're going to go to the settings. Those are Wi-Fi settings. So if you want to view it on the phone or an iPad, you've got to download an app. There's a uh, Raymarine or the Raymarine app. Yeah, like I, I don't know. Onto the like, unit I itself. The water is riding on a wave on it, so I don't really know outside of too far around here. Kind of thing. So I'm looking for. And then what you would do is. You go to the Wi Fi channel. Wi Fi. When you download the app on your unit, mm -hmm. and you go to that and you'll turn that unit on, it'll search for this. So you want to make sure that you've got the, the Wi-Fi name and Wi-Fi so the Wi-Fi name. It will come up because this is this. Yeah. So this would be what when you do the search on the app from your phone, right. it'll search for available devices. G generally, you're only, you're, there's only going to be one available device, right. and it'll show us this. Okay. That, that right. So that. So I sync it on my phone then, to that. Yes, and then you, yeah, and then you connect, and then whatever you see here, you see on your on your device. Will it be recording on my? On you my can phone? record automatically. It will, my, not, it will not. But you can. There's there's a feature there. Like if you have like a cool bottom screen or something like that, it's a shot you want to, it'll it will record that if you if you tell it to. Okay. Yeah. Do you use the alarms at all? Say that. I don't. Yeah. Okay. I do not. I did the backup. I got the uh, yeah. I did the backup system settings. Yeah. Um, we'll go in here and take a look at that yeah. and see what's under see what's under here. You have it set to English? Yes. They didn't have Italian, so I said no. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, your key beeps, if you like to hear the visual audio beep, it's on or off. Uh, it's, you know, um, we go to unit setup. I think that's probably like whether you want it in, yeah. Nautical. Yeah, nautical miles, knots, or mile per hour, feet, temperature in Fahrenheit or Celsius. Those are all just your, that, those, those depth or uh, uh -huh. units of measurement. GPS setup, new satellite status, 
Yeah, let's take a look at that. Some of this stuff we're just figuring out as we go here. So you can see the unit's not that hard, not that hard no, to, to navigate through. Um, it's in simulator mode, so none of that stuff's going to show up there. But you did have a question about changing the heading to north up, right? Yes. Yeah, let's go, let's go check that out. Actually, let's see what other settings we have. So here's all the other, other settings, sonar, the time and date. Keep, let's go to sonar setup and see what's under here. The depth offset. So this would be like, say you're on a, you're on a, a reservoir and you know, they've had like flood conditions and the lake's 10 foot above normal. The contours are gonna be off. So you would go in, in here and then you could add, you know, add 10 feet. See what I'm doing here with the um, however many feet up or if, it's a, or if it's like a drought condition, the lake's five foot low, then you could take those contours and then reduce it by five foot to bring your depth contours in, into this actual conditions that you're, you're faced with right now. That's the simulator. Yeah, so. But let's go to the map. It's a magnetic case. You just had it. Yeah. You, it's a magnetic no, case. Yeah, no, but what you're talking about is like uh, how, how it's used. It. I want to track it the way I'm going. Yeah. So I we're going to track it the direction I'm going, not to the magnetic north. Yeah. Yeah. So this, like this is how we do that. So we're going to go back here. We're on the chart, chart screen. Yep. <clears throat> Navigate. Chart, chart, chart settings. See so chart orientation. Gotcha. North up. Okay. Hit OK. Course up. That's what I want. Okay. okay. Yeah. This way, because I can follow it back. Though. Yeah. I'd rather do no, that. No, that'd be that way, because when you're looking at this with a course up, whatever's on your right here is on your right. right. Whatever's exactly. on your left is on your left. I had it the other way. Yeah. Like that, and it so you just go to you just go to course up. Gotcha. And boom, you see the screen just flipped? Yeah. Yeah. Yep, so that's how you fix that. Gotcha. Um, your boat position, this is another thing I'll do. Only on my graph that I'm using, that I'm looking at when I'm running the big engine. I'll go boat position, see how it says center. That means where is it on the screen. I'm going to offset it. I'm going to have it offset. And you see what it just did? It just took the screen, the boat, and it moved it up and so when you're running fast under power, you'll have more of the screen what's coming up in front of you. And that's what you want to see. You follow me? That way you on the map you can see more of what's in front of you. You really don't care what's behind you. You want to know what's co what's coming up. So by taking that boat and lowering it, yeah. offsetting it, right. you have more you're more on the map I'm of what's coming up. up in front of you. They're good. They're good. Well, this is too, this, more this is good. Is that something I did? Yeah. I, I only do that on the, on the unit that I'm that I'm, I'm you mean, primarily using when I'm when I'm under power. Right. Yep. With your speed, you can get in trouble. Real yeah, quick. exactly. So that's why that's why I do that. So we show you chart orientation, the boat position, deep water from. So this is kind of a cool feature here. So this is a shading feature that will change the shades yes. on right. So most of the time, the deep water from 50 foot is going to be way too much. So I'll usually take that, make it like 10, 10 foot, depending on the bio water I'm in, but. If I'll I, usually make it like. I know I'm crazy. Oops, so I sorry. go like the back ways to the, the cove, and, and that's really all I know. I'm gonna make one expand out because I'm going to make it like 12 foot. So I want, I'm gonna want to expand out. And that'll change the shading, so it'll make it a little bit easier for you to see that that deeper water, and you know where you're safe, and and or if you're fishing in that that depth zone, it makes it easier to see. Mm -hmm. You know, or like for example, like if I'm smallmouth fishing up on Lake Champlain, and I know I'm not going to be fishing any deeper than 40 foot. I'll put that I'll put that 40 foot shading on, and I just know anything that's pretty much anything deeper than 40 foot will be white. Anything shallower than 40 foot will be that blue color. So I'll focus on that on that blue color. Okay. So. What are you primarily using this for? Like, what kind of boat are you running? A uh, 24 foot jet boat. 24 foot jet boat. What kind of what kind of fishing are you doing? Like back bays or back bays? Back bays. Yeah. Okay. So I mean, either 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 the five pro or the seven pro. They all they all do the same thing. Yeah, they both do charting. 
So yeah, they're both charting capable. They're multi they're multi-function units. They do charting, they do graphing. Um, they, they both do the exact same thing. The only difference is the size of the screen. Okay, right. so this one doesn't do anything this one won't do. This one just has a bigger screen. Is the side view really important? These do not do side view. Is it important though? For what what is usually like flying fishing, yeah. food fishing? It's not. I mean it's a nice to have. <clears throat> yeah. Are you looking for wrecks a lot? Are you looking for like real like isolated rock piles and stuff like that? Then you really probably won't don't need it. Right. You know. Um, these do these are chirp down vision and chirp sonar. Um, <clears throat> so if you are there a lot of wrecks around here? Yeah, they're they're wrecks, you know, but I don't think you're gonna find too many of them in the back bay. You know, most of that stuff's yeah, out front, you know. Um, and you'll see them when you're down, you know, underneath the view. The, the side the side view is nice for when you're searching and trying to comb water. That's 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 you know that. You know, but if you if you know I'm gonna go drift this channel or I wanna go drift this one, I mean, don't know how much you really need to see it. They see um, the width of it without the side view is is still. Is depends on the depth of the water you're in because so the cone angle it shoots a cone down, right? So if you're in 25 foot of water, that cone is going to be wider than if you're in 10 foot of water. But wider at the bottom or wider at the bottom? At the bottom. So so you're going so the deeper the deeper the water you're in, the more you're going to see at the bottom because that cone extends out. Yeah. So as the further you go, the deeper you go, it allows the cone to go wider. So am I really getting any, like, how, is it, if a fish are close to the boat? Yeah, you'll, yeah. Am I you're not really going to see it or need you, you to only see as wide as the boat? You'll, you'll, yeah, exactly, right. So you'll only see fish that are in that cone angle. Yeah. And generally, the cone angle is not going to be wider. Yeah, yeah. So you're seeing what's, the, what's essentially directly below. So that's why the side view is kind of That's why the side Yeah, but see, the side view, you can see fish Were you guys the, the ones view. that need to You. You can see fish on the side view, but that's not what it's predominantly used for. The side view is used to see bottom of the right? so You can see clouds of bait off the side, so you may be able to see isolated fish, but that's not like what it's primary purpose for. The primary purpose for side view is to see the bottom. And the, 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 the wrecks or, or your transitions or drop offs or stumps. Or, that's so not going to be great for you. It's not gonna be great to look at we were, well, in we this area. At the pattern, no, right? that's yeah, yeah, you can do it, but that's not primarily what it's designed for. Yeah. Yeah, but these, these dragonfly units, they don't have side view. They're not compatible with side view. There's not like a mod that you can buy to put side view onto them. They just they just don't do it. They make other gray marine units that do it, but they they don't have them here. Yeah. Yeah, I think. Any other questions? Okay. Cool. So you're, you're pretty much at the street. That's the only thing. You're the that's menu. That's 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 yeah, I'm the menu. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So I mean, I, I, there's, a, there's a bunch of other units called Axiom units that are the new multi-function units that are similar to what you see here. And they do every day. They have 3D side view units. Not only do they have the regular side view, it's three-dimensional side view. Yeah, but these dragonflies, um, they're, you know, you get a lot for the money, right? I mean, they're, they're fairly, fairly affordable compared to some of them. And then the charting, it has like all, uh, is it, do you have the load charts? It has charts that come set with it, but then generally, you, you're, to get your detail, you'll want like an avionics chart or like a seat, you know, there's, there's a bunch of different charts they sell there where you're fishing, but they have an SD card that you just put it in the back. For like, you can just save this for Yeah, 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 exactly. Okay. Yeah. Good, thank you. Hey, thanks for so much, appreciate it. Yep. What do you do with the depth limit, you know what you say? Okay, so the depth shading. So like, say I'm on Lake Champlain. Is that the shading? The deep limit? The deep limit. Oh, you have deep water. These are alarms. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I don't, that's not, that's not. Waste your time with that. Yeah, I don't mess with that. I'm not late this yeah. You like the alarms, huh? No. no okay. No, no, I'm just looking. Gotcha. Um, yeah, did you get what I was saying about the depth shading there? Yes. Okay. So that, that way, it, that it way. helps me, it helps I you eliminate it, water. I used it for not to run into things. Yeah, like no, you can do that too. I mean, that's, I said my for 10 foot. No, yeah. just, I got enough water under me. Yes. To run it. Yes. You know, I like rocks. I understand. You, know. you do. But there's another, there's another alternative use for that. Is that it helps you eliminate water that. when you're no, looking just, at when I you're just, looking? You know, I understood that. Yeah. Like if the weed line is at uh, 10 foot yeah. or 12 foot, then you don't set, set, it, set it for weed line. Yep. And that you just brought that up. Yep. I'm learning a lot more right now. You're doing good, man. Thank you. I appreciate you're that. Doing good. You good boy. Thanks. I do good work sometimes. You do good work. <laughs> um, what else did I want to show you? Well, show me again. fish on the best way to look to see fish. Okay. So the best way to see fish is to start with 
is to make sure you're in the right, using the right sonar. And the best way to see fish is on sonar as opposed to down vision. Down vision gives you a better, better view of the bottom, very detailed, and you can definitely see fish on it, but it's easier to see the fish on sonar. So this is in simulator mode, but this is, uh, I usually don't, you don't have to do a whole lot of trying to dial these things in. Most of, the, so most of these things that come out of the box, and, and you don't have to do a whole lot with sensitivity. Um, and what you're gonna see here is like these guys up here, this is actually some fish, this is fish, this is fish. These vertical arches like this, actually, I'm gonna actually go to a split screen, I'm gonna show you the differences. I'm gonna run both of them simultaneously, and you can kind of see the differences. So you see on the bottom here, the, these screens are identical. They're mm -hmm. both showing you the exact same thing. So this you can see on your down vision is actually standing timber, right? You can see that clear as day. Up here, it almost kind of looks like it could be a school of fish, right? But you can come down here and see it's actually standing timber. See these little white dots up here? These little dots, those are the fish that are suspended in the water column, okay? And then you can also have like that, that, that little white dot there, that is probably a fish suspended right above the standing timber. And then you can see it up here as well. But again, it's easier to see here what you're looking at on the bottom. Mm -hmm. But this these stuff up here shows you, it's a little easier to see stuff in the water column here than it is there. Well, I saw something, and I just want to clarify, I saw something to show that the bass, bass were all on the bottom. Oh, yeah. yeah, so well, the bass, not always, but the, when you see bass that are locked, fish on that are locked down on the bottom, they're, those are the ones that are in, in, in eating mode or a positive mode, mood, and they're the ones, that's when you want to fish for them. This is the hardest fish to catch are suspended fish. So if you're driving over a spot or a ledge and you see a bunch of fish suspended up off the bottom. It would be this one or that. No, that's, really yep, yeah, that, that's probably a tree right there. But like, see this arch up here? And yeah, that's, that's a suspended yeah, fish. Yeah, that's a suspended fish. That's correct. You're not correct. seeing anything on the bottom, yeah. actually. And then, so the returns on this, see that like orange, orange yeah. kind of center in there? That's like your strongest return, so it's real hard. Um, you see fish up here, like that fish up there, like that's, that's a, that's a good fish because you can see it's suspended up. You can see it down here, that little white dot above the standing timber. But the, up here, you see how it has like that orange in it. That's when you know it's like a better quality it's fish because it's stronger return on the unit. Okay, so if I'm driving along, basically. Yeah. So what 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 kind of the, the, the sonar the, the, the returns won't tell you what kind of fish that is, mm -hmm. but your understanding of how fish relate and what depth they're in will tell you what kind of fish they are. You know, and how they set up on stuff. Like most of the time, bass when they're in a positive mood. They set up on the bottom and they'll be stacked one right after another. You know, you'll see them on the bottom here, like little white dot, little white, another white dot, and they'll be just lined up along the bottom. That mm -hmm. means they're in a, they're ready to eat. When, it, when there's a bunch of fish pulled up off the bottom in the little water column, they could be bass, but they're probably in like a neutral mood, and those are the hardest fish to catch. But you just can't look and say, oh, that's the shape of a bass, that's the shape. I mean, granted, if you have like a real, real big return on the bottom, chance are it's like a catfish or carp or something like that. You know what I mean? Because the, the, the bass don't get to be the size of a 25, 30 pound catfish. So in that instance, yeah, it can. It should, it, it, everything just kind of gives you give you clues as to what type of fish they are. <coughs> what else? Um, here's something cool I'll do to keep myself organized with, with regards to waypoints. So let's go to the chart screen again. <laughs> chart so you know we fish a lot of different lakes and you know, load waypoints this is a cool little deal to show you how to organize so your waypoints right and keep them separated the and um, get under the waypoints well yeah it'll move with your boat and I, because we'll our, talk about the, the groups over the, the units come with I one folder game, unsorted and that's where all your units will go that's where all your waypoints will go when you save them so what i do is i come over to the right hand screen under, and i create a group for every every lake we fish i have a folder named after that lake so when i'm on that particular lake and i start saving waypoints when you save the waypoint i showed you how to rename it there's another menu yeah. that says what yeah, group you, you want to go into. 
So when you so save like, that waypoint, you switch it over to the, let's say for example, here, we're on Lake Champlain, right, I'm gonna have a Lake Champlain um, group, and every waypoint I save on Lake Champlain, I'm gonna put it in that group. That way, when I'm done with the tournament, oh, man, I, I can take those waypoints, down, download the whole folder. I don't have to do every waypoint. I may have to try and may have 100 waypoints. I don't have to individually download every waypoint on an SD card. I just download the whole folder to an SD card. All my waypoints on the SD card, and I delete the unit, delete that group from the graph. It keeps your graphs running quicker because you're not you're not bogging them down with a lot of waypoints, a lot of tracks, and everything like that. So then the next time I come back to Lake Champlain, then I just put that disc in and upload the waypoints back on there. And it keeps your unit real clutter free and it keeps it running real quick. I'll do that with tracks too, like on certain bodies of water, like the James River, for example. It's a real dangerous body of water to run real shallow. I'll save those tracks that way when I figure out a way into a place that's safe, I always have it. That's interesting. I, so I have all my waypoints loaded in currently, but they're not sorted. They're on, they're on sorted. And so you whenever can, I go to a lake, it's got the waypoints for that lake in there. Yeah, but, but you also have all the other waypoints all over the place, too, right. and all the other lakes. Right. You know, which, you know, it's not, it's not a bad thing. I just, it just helps. When you start getting to four or five hundred waypoints, it can, it can bog the unit down. And it, it, can, it can run a little bit slower. Can you sort the waypoints once you... Well, for example, we got a bunch of waypoints mm -hmm. in on sorting. Yeah, you, you can take them and move them. You got to do them individually. Just got to just got to regroup. Them. Yeah, you would go to, you would go to the unsorted. We'll pull them up. We'll pull the unsorted folder. Up. There's 183 waypoints in there. When you start, you go to waypoint one and you hit OK. And you come down to the group. Now oh, it's unsorted, you hit OK, and then it's going to bring up all the different, there's a, there's a group 1HI that's already created, if I wanted to move it in there, you just hit OK and it moves it. And you would have to do that individually, and get, get all the waypoints from whatever folders you want them in. So that'd be your temp, that'd be your depth numbers. So if you, if you view the waypoints, you view the waypoints of all the different spots, and that doesn't tell you where it's at. Words, Not right now, to, it doesn't. Yeah, you wouldn't, like, you wouldn't know, know. You wouldn't know. Yeah, you. Oh, well, I show you what you can do is um, go back to the unsorted in order to figure out where the waypoint. If you wanted to go and resort them, you got to figure out which lake's on what. Right. So you'd go to that whatever. Go to waypoint three. You hit OK, and there should be a view view on chart. Um, show on chart. See, See the show on chart. This is going to be chart. That's your down Is it chart? Chart. It's a better. It's a better, what's the word? It, it defines fish better. Show on chart. Mm -hmm. This one might be set a And now, like boom, it just took you, and now it's showing you, showing you that, that particular waypoint. Well, this instance, there's a ton of waypoints on there. You know what I mean? But as you zoom in, um, you zoom in, you can actually change it to show the, the waypoint numbers show up on the screen. And then you would that, that you would know where it is, and then you could properly put it into the put folder it, it belongs. See this? So you just when okay, you so you go little, back and you just right. read, you just take the just right. yeah. yeah. Just yeah. I think that if you just hit is. hit that, no, it wouldn't work. You go, you would just go, you would hit your uh, your OK but button. Watch, like, this one and then you go down to your waypoints. Like you go to that, go back to that waypoint and move it. So that it, that is tedious, but once you get it set up and you remember to do it going forward, it's easy. Okay. By putting it by time, if you put it by date, that'll help you out. Oh, it automatically records the date. It automatically records the date. Every, every waypoint records the date and time the waypoint was made. Oh, is that right? Yeah, see, date, date modified, but we'll, again, we'll go in. And yeah, you see the date, see the dates on the right hand side? That's the, that's okay, the date, so that's, that's the time good. and the day that they were they so were initially punched um, in. Now you can go and make seasons now. Yeah. You're going to buy seasons too. Yeah. Okay, that's cool. That's okay, not here. Okay. Cool. Um, can I put this on YouTube now? Yeah, because sure. we're doing this from here. We just introduce it. yourself. I'm Ryan Smith, a Raymarine uh, Pro Ambassador. Okay. No.